Brilliant. Right, let's crack on then. Um, hi, um, welcome to the Oxford SU Sabbatical Officers Q&A and um, meet the sabbatical officers. Um, uh, we will start with just a round of introductions. A quick one, the sabbatical officers are your six elected officers at Oxford SU. We work full time um, at Oxford SU and we've just uh, in the finish, finished, we just finished or we have taken a year out of studying Oxford um, and um, we get paid for the job um, and we work for the year from July to July um, representing students and improving the overall student experience. We'll be telling you a lot, lots more about what that actually means um, throughout the session and we're also here to answer any kind of other questions that you might have about the fair, um, or about life at Oxford this year or kind of just things that you might want to get involved with or, or questions. Um, I'm going to start off with a round of introductions. Um, so I'm Ben, I'm Vice President of Charity Communities. I use he, him pronouns. I just finished my geography degree at St. Catharines. Um, Nikita, do you want to go for it? Thanks. I'm Nikita Ma. I'm the President of Oxford SU and I use she, her pronouns. I just finished my second year of PP at Trinity College. Tucker, do you want to go? Sure. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. I'm Tucker. I'm the Vice President for Access and Academic Affairs. Uh, I just finished my undergraduate degree at Brazenose College. I used Stephen pronouns and I studied philosophy and linguistics. I'm Alex. Hi, I'm Alex. I'm your VP Women for the year. I use they them pronouns uh, and I just finished my DPhil in Molecular Biology of Health and Disease at the Dunn School um, and I was with Lincoln College. Um, Lauren? Hi guys, I'm Lauren. I'm VP Graduates. I use she, her pronouns, and I was on the master's in higher education last year at Worcester College. Amelia, over to you. Hi, um, I'm Amelia. I'm your VP for Welfare and Equal Opportunities. Um, I use she, her pronouns, and I just finished my theology degree at St. John's. Um, send it back to Ben. Brilliant, that's all of us. Um, <clears throat> did uh, Nikita, did you want to start by just talking a little bit perhaps about, about your role and, and what Oxford SU actually is? Sure. So I'm the president and there isn't a specific remit to my role as with a lot of the other sabbatical officers, but I can definitely give you a brief introduction to the work we do at the Students' Union. So can I get a drum roll from the other SABs? So I invented this acronym called SCARS. So S-C-A-R-S, that sums up all our work. So the first S stands for societies, which is, well, one of the most obvious things on the list as we organize a freshers fair every year. So including this fair that you're in right now. So all the clubs and societies you see here are registered on our online directory on the student union website. And I would strongly encourage you to head over there to check out some of the societies that aren't at the freshers fair. This is probably a good time for me to also mention that the student union runs two schemes, namely RAG and Target Schools and they both have stalls at the Freshers' Fair today. So RAG stands for Raise and Give, and they're the fundraising arm of Oxford SU. Target Schools is the access scheme that we do that is also student-run. So you can speak to them to find out more about their work if you're interested. And of course, don't be shy and chat with the stall holders at the different clubs and societies here. So moving on to the C. The C stands for Common Rooms. We work with your common rooms from working with your representatives to get feedback on the student body's opinions to the university to providing welfare supplies like condoms, pregnancy tests and rape alarms to the common rooms. We also offer training for common rooms to run workshops, for example, the sexual consent workshop, which all students have to undertake. Other workshops include diversity training and bystander intervention training. Alex, our VP Women, can tell you more about them and feel free to slide into the DMs. Then on to A, A stands for the advice service. A free, independent and impartial advice service is available for any student in need. I should also emphasize that our advice service does not offer opinions nor legal advice, but we did offer dog walks back then when there wasn't a pandemic. Moving on to R, R is for representation. So that is definitely one of the most important things we do at the SU. So you are, represent you are represented by the student union in three ways, by your sabbatical offices, so that's the six of us, your divisional representatives and the Oxford SU campaigns. So the sabbatical offices are your six elected representatives and we represent you to the university by sitting on various committees and councils. We are paid to do so, as Ben mentioned just now, and we work from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. We all have Facebook and Twitter and of course emails, so don't be shy and slide into our DMs. The divisional representatives represent you to the university on an academic level for the four different divisions. So definitely get in touch with them if there's anything academic related you would like to speak about. Onto the SU campaigns, we have four liberation campaigns. CRAE, which stands for Campaign for Racial Awareness and Equality, 
Plus Act, Disabilities Campaign, and the LGBTQ Plus Campaign. We also have three intersectional campaigns, namely International Students Campaign, It Happens Here, and Suspended Students Campaign. They all have stalls at the Freshness Fair here too, so go check them out. And the last S stands for Student Council, which is a democratic decision-making body for all students. Normally it's an in-person event, but we've gone online since Trinity term last year because of the pandemic. All students can attend Student Council, propose motions, run for council officer positions, and contribute to the debates and discussions. However, only certain members can vote in council, namely your representatives. So if you remember from earlier, that includes us, the sabbatical officers, the various SU campaigns, your, division, your divisional representatives, and representatives of your common room get votes too. So how can you get involved in student council? The easiest one is definitely coming along to a council meeting to get a taste of what it's like. We meet four times each time in the odd weeks, and the upcoming meeting is on October 13th, next Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. All the meetings will be online this term, so get a mug of hot chocolate and come along. And so there you have it, the quick whistle stop tour of the acronym SCARS, which stands for Societies, Common Rooms, Advice Service, Representation, and Student Council. Brilliant, thank you very much. Absolute whistle stop tour um, around so much there. So thank you very much. And absolutely, if you've got any questions about those, um, yeah, just use the Q&A function and we will get through to your hey. questions. Um, I wonder whether next up, we can quickly just go around and, and maybe give a little bit, a little, little 30 seconds feel about what we what we actually do um and the kind of main focuses for our role for the, the coming year um i don't mind starting to avoid confusion so i do charity community so stuff that comes under me is kind of stuff about sustainability and housing um, and supporting students um organizing projects and stuff like volunteering um and kind of helping make oxford a better place both for students and the wider community as well um so my main priorities this year is supporting um engagement on sustainability so um, delivering projects that encourage students to become more sustainable and getting the university to take action uh, for climate change if you're interested about that come along to our tackling the climate act taking climate action uh, talk yeah. later today at three o'clock um, other stuff as i mentioned is supporting student groups that do fund charity fundraising and volunteering um, as well as um, supporting graduate housing um, and other aspects of the university um, universities estates and that kind of stuff um, I don't know whether Alex you wanted to go next and talk a little bit about your roles and priority. Yeah, sure. Um, so VP Women, I work on gender equality issues for um, uh, the university, for students and for staff. Um, and my main priorities for this year are primarily around um, sexual health. So I'm trying to create a sexual health education resource for students on our website. I'm working on extending our um, uh, sanitary product scheme uh, that we provide to common rooms to departments so that um, more graduate students have access to it. Um, and I'm also working on getting um, side effects from hormonal birth control added like explicitly to the list of mitigating circumstances for your academic work. Um, uh, we've already had a bit of a win with that one um, with Tucker and Lauren getting it added to the list of mitigating circumstances for grad admissions. Uh, but yeah, uh, I also run the consent workshops, um, which you'll probably have to attend this week. Please go. Um, <laughs> consent is sexy. Um, and I will be running throughout the year some like uh, bystander intervention training and diversity training starting in fourth week of this term. So yeah, uh, Amelia. Hi, um, so I'm VP for Welfare and Equal Opportunities. So everything kind of within my remit is to do with student well-being um, and welfare, mental health, physical health, um, but also ensuring representation of students regardless of gender, sexuality, disability, race, class, um, and doing that sort of rep representation on a university level. Um, in terms of my focuses for this year, um, I'm looking at working closely with uh, common room reps um, so I can better understand what the concerns are for students um, on the ground. Um, my second priority is working with Alex um, on their sexual health work and promoting the services that are available in Oxford. And my third priority is looking at um, substance misuse and harm reduction um, to ensure people can be um, happy, healthy and safe, essentially. Um, I'm going to pass on to Lauren. Cool, yeah. So as VP graduates, um, graduate students are in my remit and also international students. Um, so my job is to make sure that grad students and international students are, you know, um, taken into account whenever the university makes decisions um, and to lobby for the changes that would improve international students and grad students student experience. So some of the things that I'm working on this year 
Um, one is bringing uh, students together in a better way to, um, you know, so bring their voices together so they can, you know, work with uh, staff and get things changed um, in terms of decolonizing the curriculum, inclusive classrooms, um, things of that nature. Another thing I'm doing is working with grad admissions to make sure that the information about the graduate community is made more clear to prospective students and offer holders. And then I'm also working on getting more intercollegiate events for grad students uh, throughout the entire year. Uh, Tucker, do you want to go next? Sure, hello. So as my real says, I'm the VP for Access and Academic Affairs. And what that means is basically I work on a lot of things related to education policy and also admissions policy. So those are kind of like the two main areas of my work. Um, in that, similarly to Lauren, I'm also working on um, collaborating with departments and students who are interested in initiatives like diversifying and decolonizing the curriculum. Um, also on the educational side, um, we're working on continuously trying to push for diversification of assessment and lecture capture going forward. It will definitely be a thing this year for everyone, um, but it's something that we hope will stay in future years as well. And then on the admission side, I'm very keen um, to work with, and I have been working with um, a lot of the kind of admissions um, outreach groups around Oxford to figure out how they can better promote themselves on social media and get more students involved in their outreach work, um, especially in like coronavirus digital times. Um, Nikita, do you wanna talk a little bit about what you do? Sure. So as I mentioned just now, I don't have a specific remit as president, but some of the things I'll be working on this year include having better equality and diversity at the university. So that includes at the highest levels of university. So for example, at university council, where there isn't really BME representation. Something else I'll be working on is on building better relationships with the university. And by that, I mean having better communication, because I do think it's really important for us as student representatives to make sure that our, verse, our voices are heard as a student reps. And that definitely includes letting the university know more often what students think and more in depth about what the student voice is about. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, let's go on to some questions then. <clears throat> it's probably the easiest way for us to do. And as I said, the Q&A button, Q button is at the bottom. So just click that in and then tap, uh, pop in any questions um, that you may have. Um, where to begin? Um, <laughs> Maybe one that we, we've had a couple of times already, but maybe it's worth clarifying, as I know we've had it on still as well, um, is, is the Oxford Union the same as the Students' Union? Uh, Nikita, do you want to take that one? Sure. So the Oxford Union is not the same as the Students' Union. You're automatically a member of the Students' Union when you become a member of this university, unless you opt out, and it's completely free to join the Students' Union. The Oxford Union is a debating society in Oxford, and they also have a stall at the virtual Freshers' Fair, so definitely you can also go check them out, and you can also head out to the Oxford SU's Freshers' Fair stall to see how we are very different. Brilliant. <laughs> I think what's uh, important to note, I guess, also on that point is that um, we do run events and stuff like that, and all of our events are free when they are happening. And our events normally come more through the specific campaigns that we run. Um, like we said, we also run student council volunteering schemes, um, but we are not in any ways, we are not the Oxford Union. That is a, a different organization. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's um, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Next one um, is, is perhaps a question. Um, I don't know who wants to uh, jump in on that. Uh, but next one is um, what does a, oh, here we go. Hold on a sec. Um, can recent graduates from Oxford continue to have access to um, the SU and the building on their board cards. Um, I think the membership of Oxford SU is uh, only for like current students, um, but you can have, if you get, if you want, you, the best place is to contact the alumni office if you have questions about like access to Oxford once you've left um, and they'll be able to let you know about uh, what the, the rules and regulations are around that. Perfect. Um, next one. Um, some questions about like becoming a, a sabbatical officer. Um, so maybe give me uh, whoever wants to, to jump in, maybe Nikita, um, who can become a sabbatical officer and perhaps you could say a little bit about the, the process by which um, you could become one of us. Sure, so anyone can become a sub as long as you're a student at this university. So no matter whether you're an undergraduate or a postgraduate, 
There's only one condition that you have to do with regards to academic studies if you become a SAB. So that's when you run in the middle of your year. So I just finished my second year. So I had to suspend for a year to do this role because it's a fully paid role and it's a full time job. For the other sabbatical officers, they mostly finished their degrees. So it's kind of like the first job into the workplace. So you definitely need to get the suspension thing past your college if you're in the middle of your degree. And yes, everyone can run to be a SAB. We have elect we have our annual elections in February each year, and we also offer workshops on how you can run as a sabbatical officer and how to run a successful campaign. So definitely keep in touch and yeah, hope I'll see you in the coming elections in February. I think it's yeah. probably also important to note the timeline. So we ran for our elections this past February and we started our roles in the end of June. So if you want to become a SAB, you can run this coming February and then you would start in June. Definitely good also, they let me do it, so like, you can probably do it. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks very much. And keep, yeah, keep your questions coming. We're happy to answer questions about what Oxford SU is like and what sabbatical officers are. But also, uh, we've been involved in a lot of the coronavirus planning um, for the university in the coming year. So we're happy to um, answer questions about, about that or kind of other aspects of getting involved in Oxford, uh, like sport, clubs and societies or activities. Um, maybe uh, another question that has come in, um, uh, daily life. Um, what is it like being a sabbatical officer? Um, what, what do you get up to? Um, who wants to, to start with that? Um, Lauren, Alex, Amelia, any of you want to go for a daily life? Yeah, I mean, I think it really depends on like which role you have. So um, I think, you know, Lauren, Ben, Tucker, and Nikita have a lot more um, sort of like prescribed meetings during their days um, that they have to attend and, and lobby for students uh, in those meetings with. Um, uh, university staff, whereas Amelia and I um, have a bit more uh, leeway with how we assign our time. Um, so we get to tend more to our um, manifesto points or um, set up, you know, meetings with particular staff members that we, we want to uh, liaise with. Um, it's all a bit odd doing it over Zoom these days. I think it would be a bit different in, in the before times. Um, but uh yeah mostly we just sit here and schedule teams calls and <laughs> work on documents uh mm -hmm. nine to five it's uh it's much like any other job except you know we're managing a pandemic crisis <laughs> brilliant um lauren and amelia do you want to kind of talk a little bit about what were your day what you get up to or maybe yeah, a, yeah. you can also do a kind of maybe if like a highlight or particular kind of things that you you might have found particularly interesting um if, if that's of interest yeah I don't, I don't know if i'll do that but <laughs> generally my day um so i'm one of the sabs who has like a lot of um a lot of committees that i sit on so i usually like start my day with committees um so like education committee education steering group things like that um you know so i'll read the minutes for that may um you know decide what things i want to comment on and like things i have issues with go to the meetings chat about that raise student voice and then uh, between meetings i'll you know answer a lot of emails like I work a lot with MCR presidents as well. So just chatting with them a lot about issues they're facing. Um, and then on top of that, you know, whenever I have free time, I'm working towards those like big priorities that I have. So working on like decolonizing the curriculum survey, working on like meeting with academic reps um, and figuring out how we can improve their system, that kind of thing. Brilliant. Does anyone else want to chip in on that one, Amelia? Yeah, I just wanted to say something that like, like a highlight of mine that's been um, doing the job so far. Um, and the something that something that can be quite difficult when you're working from home all the time is like remembering like exactly what you what you kind of do all this do this job for um so definitely one of the highlights for me has been actually getting to speak to students and holding kind of panels with um welfare reps and um at different colleges um and the reason i wanted to say that is because like i'm always happy to chat to students basically that's my favorite bit of the job is chatting to students so talk to me please <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks. Anybody else want to chip in on that one? I just want to say Lauren like got it totally right. It's just a lot of, I sit on a lot of committees, like probably around 20 different committees that happen throughout term. Um, and, you know, every week there's a, a handful that are happening. It's basically every day a committee meeting and then, if not two, and then other time responding to emails and then also working on projects. Yeah. Brilliant. And did you want to talk a little bit about maybe one, just a little bit, explain to people what, 
what a commit one what a committee actually is and, and oh, okay. who's involved is it is it students is it staff and maybe mm -hmm. give us an example of of, of one one committee and, and, and what they do and, and what your role sure. is as part of that so for example i'm like the only student representative on a committee called admissions committee um, and there's also admissions executive which are the committees which are um discussing undergraduate admissions policy and they're sat on by members of the undergraduate the central university's undergraduate admissions office and then all of the college's admissions coordinators so every college has like a lead admissions coordinator who sits on um, admissions committee and very often there are also a number of um there are a couple senior tutors and heads of house who also sit on that so that the committees are basically like university central university decision making bodies um and we sit on um, these decision-making bodies as the main student representatives. Um, if it's not one of the sabbatical officers, it's either going to be one of our campaign chairs who sit on some university committees or um, some of our divisional representatives. So if you really want to like be able to make a difference in university policy and the university administration, it's a really good idea to try to get involved in the Oxford SU um, because we get to be kind of in the room where it happens and making mm. the decisions um, that are affecting students and hopefully representing students to the best of our ability to create the best student experience and the best educational experience for all of you. Brilliant. Thank you very much. We've got a couple of other questions coming through. Um, so the question is, um, what question, so what, as a student, what facilities do we have access to as being part of the SU? Um, is that like for Worcester Street um, and which is our building? And um, so the answer is that, yeah, usually you'll be able to come in here and get involved. But at the moment, the building isn't open to students, um, given the current circumstances. It doesn't mean that we're not doing any work. Um, we're all available online um, by email, um, as, as Nikita mentioned. Um, but the building and current facilities that it has, <coughs> which students um, sometimes have been able to use, aren't currently open um, to students. But we will let you know um, when they are. You can attend the building if, for example, you're, you have an arranged appointment, um, but it has to be arranged directly with us. Um, if there was something that, that you wanted to do or you want to kind of talk to us or contact us doesn't mean you can't do that just because our building isn't open to students. Um, you can contact us via email or Facebook um, and we can get back to you and happy to arrange um, an online meeting. That's that one. The next question um, coming in, we'll, we'll go, um, Nikita, do you want to ask, answer this one? Uh, and then we'll go to one more after. Sure. Uh, kind of brief overview or kind of what opportunities does the SU have or, or how can I get involved with the SU? Um, so as I mentioned just now, we do quite a lot of things at the SU. So I definitely say get involved by first chatting to the different stallholders at the Freshers' Fair stalls. So for example, our campaigns all have stalls here. And there's also advice service, which you can go and chat to Hannah and Nikki at the advice service. They're absolutely lovely. And they also have a dog. So that's very cute. Um, another thing you can get involved with is student council, as I mentioned just now. And also you can definitely come over to the SU stall and chat with us on anything in particular that you have in mind. And we're all happy to answer your questions. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Uh, next one um, from Katazina. Um, it sounds like being a SAB is a great thing to do. Thank you very much. Why did you decide to become a SAB and what motivated you? Um, who would anyone want to chip in immediately? Um, anyone want to start? Um, I, you know, do you want to go for it and talk a little bit about how you got involved? Yeah, I'm, I, mine was, so my trajectory was a bit different to some of the other SABs um, in that I hadn't really done anything with the SU directly before um, I became a SAB. But I think the main thing that motiva motivated me to do it was that I really wanted to kind of make an impact on students' welfare and well-being because I was the welfare officer at my college and I really enjoyed doing that. Um, and I thought, what's the best way to kind of continue that work um, and help as many students as possible. Um, and I thought that this, this job was it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of what motivated me, but I, I don't know about Lauren, do you want to, did you want to say anything? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I ended up kind of getting involved because I got an email from the SU being like, your course is extremely relevant to, uh, the student union, like come on over. Uh, cause I studied higher education. But also, so on top of that, and just being interested in, you know, like university structures and things of that nature and getting involved in that. I just, I think in my, my in last year, I just noticed a lot of things that I thought could be improved upon. Um, and I really wanted, you know, a, a platform and a space where I could push through those changes and make Oxford a better place for everyone. Perfect. Thank you very much. Anybody else wanna chip in, Tucker? I like originally got involved with the SU through our international students campaign. 
So I kind of noticed that there was like a lack of organization among different international student groups and really wanted to find a space where like there could be organization and collaboration between international student groups. And that's why I first got involved in like the lobbying work that the Oxford SU did. So I ended up becoming one of the co-chairs of the international students campaign last year. And that led me to like want to become a sabbatical officer um, just because I saw like the tangible difference um, in students' lives that our campaigning work could make. And, um, and like being able to see that now as a sabbatical officer is one of the best things um, and it continues to motivate me um, whenever something that we like help get through a committee um, ends up becoming like a policy that supports and benefits students is, is just the best thing, so. Poet, anybody else want to chip in on that one? Or we can go to next one. Um, well, I can quickly say, um, so I got involved with um, RAG, which is Oxford SU's student fundraising group and kind of saw the kind of volunteering and charity aspects that people could get involved with. Um, and also did a bit of kind of like access volunteering um, and thought this would be a kind of fun thing to do to try and get some more things happening. So that's how I ended up here. Um, anybody else want to chip in or go to the next question? I just went clubbing a lot with like last year's SAB team and they kind of bullied <laughs> me into it. There you go. See, there's so many, so many routes in. Um, <laughs> so, so get involved and do look out for, for our adverts for um, getting involved in sabbatical offices and the annual elections, which happen in January, February. Um, uh, so, so keep an eye out for that. And as you've got our details, so you can also ask us any questions if you're thinking about running or you've got questions about what the role actually entails, let us know. Next question is from Janavi. Um, how does involvement in the student council work? Are the campaigns part of student council? Um, Nikita, you okay to hear that one? Definitely. So student council, I'm not sure what you exactly mean by getting involved, but everyone can attend student council. You can also run for the positions if you really want to get more involved in the workings of the student council. We have a lot of positions open, so definitely head over to the student council page on the SE website if you would like to run for a position. But yeah, definitely come along to the upcoming meeting at next Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. So that's first week of Nicholas term and definitely experience student council for yourself. The campaigns are not part of student council, but the campaigns report to student council. Mm -hmm. The campaigns um, also get to vote in student council as yeah. well. So when I was the co-chair of the international students campaign, um, I used to go to student council every other week and I would vote kind of with the interests of international students determining how I would vote on the different motions. So, I mean, other ways that you can get involved, you can be, you can ask your um, college's common rooms if you can be like either your JCRs or your MCRs, if you can be the rep at student council that week if you want to vote. Anyone can just attend um, without being a voting member. Um, like Nikita said, there are specific roles that you can find at that link that Daisy just popped in the chat that you can run for that kind of are like the people that run student council. Um, and also you can bring a motion to student council and also information on how to do that is there. Um, so basically, if you want to have a vote on student council, either you need to get involved with one of the campaigns, you need to be one of the voting members from your JCR, MCR, because each JCR and MCR has three voting members um, who get to go and vote in council, or you become a divisional representative. Um, yep, that's that's it, right? Is that everyone, and the, or a SAV, yeah, that's everyone who votes in council. So. Yeah, well, yeah, and you can, you can see more about student council on the website, the link that Daisy's put in the chat. Um, and yeah, the campaigns as well, you can also get involved in there all kind of democratically run as well. So campaigns really good way to get involved and see what's happening. Um, brilliant. Uh, next up um, question um, is, are sabbatical officers, and keep, keep your questions coming, just pop them in the Q&A tab at the bottom, just type them in and we will get to them. Um, so some people might be a little bit confused about kind of junior common rooms and uh, middle common rooms, JCRs and NCRs, you might hear that around um, in your college. So what is the difference between kind of like what happens at the SU and um, sabbatical officers, et cetera, and common room officers and like presidents or like access officers or who might have a women's rep, for example, in their college. So what's the difference between that and what we do? Um, I don't know whether Nikita, you wanna answer that one? Or Alex, do you wanna? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's just about scope, isn't it? So um, obviously um, junior common room and uh, middle common room officers are um, working to provide opportunities uh, for, for their, respective common rooms um, whereas we um, sort of represent all students um, in every common room uh, and we work on more broad campaigns um, uh, that you know are open to all students um, and we also sort of have more of an interface 
with um, the Central Uni um, mm -hmm. and, and we're sort of your representatives uh, to the, the Central Uni staff, whereas I, I think um, middle common room and junior common room um, officers sort of uh, interface more with uh, the actual college um, leadership. Yeah, it's just about like we deal with university wide issues and campaigns and the common rooms are like college based. So. Perfect. Um, any other questions? Keep them coming in. Uh, we've done that one. Uh, perfect. Um, what about uh, another one um, that people might be asking, thinking about is um, obviously like coronavirus and everything that's going on. So um, maybe, uh, maybe Amelia for the, the, the non-academic side and then Tucker or um, Lauren for the academic side or Amelia and Alex from the other side. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about what we've been doing with regards to coronavirus and getting the university um, sorted? Or yeah, at least the kind so, of groups that you're sitting on, that kind of thing. Yeah, big question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, lots of, lots of um, lobbying, essentially. Um, so we sit on a very wide range of committees um, to do with coronavirus planning. Um, so I sit on like the central committee, which is the Michaelmas coordination group. Um, we've got the student, student experience coordination group. We've got accommodation and dining. Um, we've got um, admissions and kind of um, education committee. Loads and loads of different committees basically all focus on coronavirus planning and uh, there is a sab sat on almost almost all of them or all of them i think it might be all the good much, ones yeah all the good ones <laughs> um so that basically means that we get to represent the student view at a university level um to university staff who may or may not direct um interact directly with students so we're able to kind of represent what student interests are um and kind of ensure that students are getting the best deal possible in the current circumstances um, so one of the one of one win that we're quite quite proud of, um, which is something Ben worked really hard on, um, was the use of the Ifley Road Sports Centre um, to be we kind of campaigned for it to be reopened, along with our help from our some of our students, um, campaigned for it to be reopened and used for sport in Michaelmas as opposed to teaching. Um, and thanks to all like the great lobbying work of the students um, and us representing them at these committees, we were able to kind of secure Ifley Road as a sports space and not a teaching space. Um, so that's just like one of the things that we've been doing over the past three months. Um, so yeah, so we just, we basically just represent students the best we can in committees when we're talking about issues to do with COVID. So. Brilliant, thank you. Um, I don't know whether um, anybody else, maybe Tucker, maybe you want to talk, uh, Tucker or Lauren, um, you want to talk about um, academic side of things or, or kind of teaching and that kind of stuff for this for this term and, and exams and that kind of stuff. Um, so there? yeah, both Lauren and I sit on a lot of education focused committees. So we sit on a committee that's basically planning like how exams are going to work this year. Um, we sit on a committee that's discussing how like teaching is going to ideally work, how lecture capture is going to work. So we're kind of just in those meetings shaping like from our experiences as a former undergraduate and graduate student, um, how we think like um, teaching best practices would be. And then when we don't know, we are constantly reaching out to um, our like divisional representatives to ask them their opinions on how teaching would work and how these teaching policies would function for them in their subject areas. Um, so that's kind of, we're doing like a lot of basically coronavirus related contingency planning to make sure that the educational experience this year is equivalent to what it's been in previous years. Um, Lauren, do you want to add anything? No. Cool. Um, Alex, did you want to come in any, on that? Alex or Nikita, do you have anything from, from the, the committees or groups that, that you, you've sat on it or anything else? Yeah, so I was on um, like the student experience subcommittee for um, welfare with Amelia, just like compiling list of resources for students for what's available to them. And we're also working on creating like a welfare task force moving forward um, to deal with like acute welfare needs that come up during uh, the course of Michaelmas term. Uh, and I also sit on the health communications uh, committee. So we decide sort of um, what 
comms go out to students about the, the, the pandemic. I, you know, personally have the opinion that more information is more power. So I've, if, if, if I've been overloading you with information, then I do apologize. But uh, I think it's good that you get as much transparency as possible. Perfect. Nikita, anything else from, from do you want to add anything? I definitely say send us messages and book in chats with us if you want to talk about anything COVID related, because we'd love to hear from you. Mm. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, if you've got any other questions, um, keep them coming in. Um, if you have any other ones, feel free to. Uh, we've got a few more minutes. Um, just to clarify, one thing that we get sometimes to get asked a lot um, is how do you become a member of the SU? Um, Nikita, I don't know if you want to ask that one again. <laughs> Definitely. So surprise, you're automatically a member of the SU and it is free to become our member unless you opt out in the registration thing you do at the start of each year. So yeah, congratulations on being our member. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, if you've got any questions, just type them in there into the Q&A box is the easiest way to answer, ask a question. Um, keep it, keep them coming. Um, if no one else has any other questions, um, we will leave it there. There's loads of um, other events coming up throughout the day. So coming up next is Looking After Yourself with uh, Alex and Amelia. Um, you may recognize them um, and I love your advice team. We're going to be letting you know some tips and tricks and, and what we get up to um, in that space and also how you can access support in your college and at the university. And yeah. um, so do stay tuned to that. There's loads of other live events which you can see on the home page um, that you've just come from with all the live events on. Um, and yeah, do take some time to, to browse through the fair. There's loads going on throughout the day um, and lots of people on those different tools to get involved with. And if you, you can head over to the different um, chat boxes if you've got any questions as well. Um, Brilliant. Any more questions? If not, we're happy to leave it there. If anyone's got anything else to, to add? You can also just message us at our stall at the Virtual Freshers Fair if you come up with That's anything also later true. today. Brilliant. Anybody got any kind of last highlights, things coming up this term that they want to, uh, that they're hyped about? I'm personally looking forward to, to uh, Rag Scavenger Hunt at the weekend. Um, great Yay. way to get to know Oxford and raise money for charity at the same time. Anybody else got anything coming up or, or things, things that they, they want to highlight? Student Council next Tuesday, 5.30 p.m. online. Yeah, and all of that is on the SU website on the events tab. Brilliant. Oh, also, so tomorrow and also Friday, we're doing pop-up stalls in Radcliffe Square, um, where we will be there in person and we can wave at you socially distanced and you can ask us any more questions <laughs> about the Oxford SU um, then. Uh, and we're just going to be there saying hi to students. So if you want to come by and say hi, um, all of us will be there kind of at different times um, throughout the day. So I hope to see you either on Thursday or Friday. And if you came to the session, make sure to you know say hi to us and let us know that you came to the session. Um, but yeah, Radcliffe Square tomorrow and also Friday from, we should be there from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Huge, in the rain, look forward to it. Um, <laughs> Brilliant. If anybody got any other questions? Oh, we have got a late question. Um, maybe um, this person missed the start of the session. Um, how does one get involved in Oxford SU? So maybe Nikita, you can, you can just summarize the, the, the kind of key ways that people can get involved with as the kind of final takeaway. Sure, definitely. So as I mentioned just now, the work of Oxford SU covers quite a lot. So we have an acronym called SCARS, which stands for Societies common rooms, advice service, representation, and student council. I definitely say um, get involved with us through student council. That's the easiest way. We have something coming up next Tuesday, 5.30 p.m. That's our student council meeting. Definitely also get involved with our campaigns. They all have stalls here, so you can head over there and say hi to them. And yeah, we also support common rooms and clubs and societies. And you can also access our free independent advice service, which is also completely confidential. Brilliant. And yeah, you've got all the campaigns, volunteering, those more best places to head over to our stool um, and head over to our website and see all the other opportunities. Um, there's loads of stuff to get involved. We also obviously look after Oxford Student and Oxide Radio. So there's other opportunities beyond kind of like political stuff um, or kind of campaigning stuff. Um, so do you get involved? And as, as Tucker and others said, just drop us an email any questions. We're going to leave it there. Um, that coming up next um, at one o'clock is looking after yourself and what support is there available um, about welfare, well-being and mental health. Um, at the University of Oxford with um, Alex and Amelia and um, our student advice team. So Yay. we'll see you then and it will all be around um, during the fair as well. So you can go can reach us there. Thanks very much and have a great rest of the day.